From the moment we wake up, even while we sleep, our nervous system is at work. Every sensation, action, and emotion we do and feel are made possible by the nervous system. The nervous system consists of two major divisions, the CNS or central nervous system and the PNS or peripheral nervous system, which is also subdivided into the sensory and motor divisions. The central nervous system includes two organs, the brain and spinal cord. On the other hand, the peripheral nervous system, which lies outside the CNS, consists of nerves and ganglia. Cells of the nervous system are the neurons and neuroglia. Neurons are nerve cells receive stimuli and transmit action potentials to other neurons or to affect their organs. Its parts include the cell body or soma that contains a single nucleus. The dendrites are short, cytoplasmic extensions that function to receive information from another neurons or from sensory receptors and transmit the information toward the soma. An axon is a long cell process extending from the neuron cell body. Axons of motor neurons conduct action potentials away from the CNS and axons of sensory neurons conduct action potentials toward the CNS. They are surrounded by neuroglia called Schwann cells, which form an insulating layer of cells wrapped with myelin. A gap in the myelin sheath is called a node of Ravier. There are three kinds of neurons, unipolar, which has a single axon, bipolar, which has one dendrite and one axon, and multipolar, a neuron with several dendrites and one axon. There are also different kinds of neuroglia, astrocytes that provide structural support. Oligodendrocytes, which form myelin sheets around several axons. Ependymal cells that circulate wherever spinal fluid. Microglia that protect CNS from infection. And Schwann cells, which form myelin sheets around axon in PNS. Now that we know the different types of cells present in the nervous system, let's proceed to the action potential. Resting membrane potential is the charge difference across the membrane of an unstimulated cell. First, sodium channels and most potassium channels are closed. There is greater concentration of sodium ions outside and greater concentration of potassium ions inside. During depolarization, sodium channels open and sodium ions move inside the cell which makes the inside of the membrane more positive. Repolarization occurs when sodium channels close and potassium channels open. Sodium movement into the cell stops and potassium movement out of the cell increases. A reflex is an involuntary reaction in response to a stimulus applied to the periphery and transmitted to the CNS. The neuronal pathway by which a reflex occurs is called a reflex arc. It begins with a sensory receptor. Then, the sensory neurons conduct action potentials to the spinal cord where they synapse with the interneurons. They, in turn, synapse with the motor neurons in the spinal cord to an effector organ. On to our next stop, the brain. Two of the main regions of the brain, which is the main organ of the nervous system, are the cerebrum and cerebellum. Both of these play big parts in motor functions and sensation. Sensation is the conscious awareness of stimuli. The frontal lobe is important in control of aggression, mood, and in charge of olfactory or smell receptors. The parietal lobe is the principal center for most sensory information such as pain, balance, taste, and touch. The occipital lobe functions in perception of visual input. Lastly, the temporal lobe is involved in olfactory and auditory or hearing sensation. Indeed, the nervous system is a complex structure, but its complexity plays an important role in the maintenance of our important body functions. Without it, we would simply be a mindless and senseless walking organism.